There. Hello. Hi, guys. We made it. It's quarter to six, 5.45. After probably eight and a half hours of him being <laughs> on the phone today. Yeah, we're putting a study together on, on love. And it's turning into <laughs> really something. It's a neat, yeah, it's getting deep. It's amazing how much we don't know what love is <clears throat> or what it isn't, you know. So I did put my little two cents in there, so. Yep. Yeah, I've contributed. <laughs> yes, you did. Just a little. She does a lot more than she realizes. Anyway, we have Ephesians 6.12 here this evening. So we'll get into it and see where we go with it. Are you ready to be quiet? No, but let's climb on to it. Hello, dear brothers and sisters, chosen and dearly beloved by the happy <laughs> God. Yes, we're dearly beloved. From John Essex, God's Celestial Purpose, pages 142-143, we read our chief opponent is very cunning, and he is. Right. He constantly resorts to stratagems to gain his ends. He controls powerful forces, here described as sovereignties, authorities, world mites of this dark, darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness among the celestials. When these forces are about seeking our destruction, or at least our discomfort, it is folly to play into their hands by wrestling with blood and flesh. Let the world do this if it wishes. We are not of this world. Elsewhere, we are exhorted to be working, as we have occasion, for the good of all, yet especially for the family of faith. Galatians 6, 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's on the right hand side. <clears throat> In the <laughs> concordant, anyway. The oppositions of these sovereignties and authorities among the celestials is directed against the headship of Christ. And it is because Christ is given to the ecclesia head over all that we are specially liable to their attacks. Furthermore, scriptural history reveals that whatever a fresh development in God's purpose is whenever a fresh development in God's purpose is disclosed, the adversary is poised to pounce. Satan does all he can to destroy God's efforts, but invariably fails, though he may wreak much havoc in his failures. <laughs> For instance, yep. when man first appeared on the scene, Satan was soon in evidence, and his schemes in Eden caused sin and death to pass through to all mankind. What havoc this has caused. But Satan has not secured a victory. For though he might bring about the destruction of the old humanity, headed by Adam, he could not prevent the creation of a <laughs> yeah. new humanity headed up by yeah, Christ. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Didn't matter what he did. Nope, it's still, <laughs> he, yep. He couldn't get to the seed. He ain't got it. What may have seemed to him at the time of the crucifixion to be his greatest triumph, we uh, will eventually be seen by all to have been turning point in the divine purpose, leading to, with certainty, to his total defeat. From Check Your Penelope, pages 42, we see, Our place in Christ will not exempt us from the wicked one's attacks, nor will the study of God's word in itself, nor prayer as such, nor a flawless walk, if there is one. Through all of these things together from the material which is needed to provide our defenses. Yeah, and in human terms, to make a resistance successful, we must be vigilant to do certain things without fail. But in this case, we need not worry. <laughs> We're sealed. God, in his wisdom, has provided a complete suit of armor, which is an entirely adequate protection against the stratagems of the adversaries. To make it short, in a short size for me. Mm, yeah, they got you. They got you. <laughs> God covered you all. No, it wouldn't take a whole lot, but well, it might this way, but no. You got a seal on you, bub. You're sealed. God is able to do super excessively above all that we are requesting or apprehending according to the power that is operating in us. 
To him (laughs) be the glory. Yeah, Ephesians 3.20. Essex continues in this book, It is the stratagems of the adversary that we have to stand up to at this time, not flesh and blood. It is for this that we need a unique protection. And indeed, in light of of this need, God has provided his fanatically. We cannot hope to stand in our own strength. Our opponents are far too crafty, determined, and ruthless. Well, I know I can't do that. Mm. This is a time for vigilance and constant prayer, not rest and relaxation. What a marvelous provision we have been given. This invigoration in the Lord and the protective penalty. Penalty. Penelope. Penelope that God has given to us. Why that? Yeah. Couldn't say it. <clears throat> in the in the, the bar translation, it reads this way. Since, or for, since for us the really fight, wrestle means wrestle, is not to blood and flesh, but to the origin beings, to the authorities, to the cosmocrats, of this very darkness to the bespirited ones of the evilness in the heavenlies. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Uh, that's right. The origin no. beings, the, uh, that's the sovereignties, is the origin beings. They're not very nice. And the cosmocrats is the world mites. They're not nice. And uh, this, and the spirited ones, and the evilness is the darkness in the heavenlies or the celestials. They're not, not very nice. <laughs> oh, go this ahead. is how this how. Uh, go ahead. This is how the uh, concordant reads in I'm, Ephesians six twelve. This is our Ephesians Bible. six twelve. For it is not ours to wrestle with blood and flesh, but with the sovereignties, with the authorities, with the world mites of this darkness, with the spiritual forces of wickedness among the celestials. Yeah. So we put some references. We dig them out and. Uh, Here's what we start out with and how they run. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I am a very, brethren, that flesh and blood is not able to enjoy an allotment in the kingdom of God. Neither is corruption enjoying allotment of incorruption. Galatians 1, 15 and 16. Now when it delights God, who severs me from my mother's womb and calls me through his grace, to unveil his son in me, that I may be evangelizing him among the among the nations. I did not immediately submit to its flesh and blood. Yep, Ephesians one fifteen through twenty two. Therefore, I also, on hearing of this faith of yours in the Lord Jesus, and that for all the saints, <laughs> do not cease giving thanks for you, making mention in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may be given you a spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the realization of him. In the eyes of your heart, having been enlightened, for you to perceive what is the expectation of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his enjoyment of the enjoyment of his allotment among the saints, and what the transcendent greatness of his power for us <laughs> who are believing in accord with the operation of of the might of his strength. Which is operative in the Christ, rousing him out from among the dead and seating him at his right hand among the celestials, up over every sovereignty and authority and power and lordship and every name that is named, not only in this eon, but also in that which is impending, and subjects to all under his feet, and gives him as head over all to the ecclesia. Ephesians 3, 8 through 13. To me, less than the least of all saints, was granted this grace. That's me. <laughs> That's me. To bring the evangel of the untraceable riches of Christ to the nations, and to enlighten all as to what is the administration of the secret which has been concealed from the eons in God who creates all. That now may be made known to the sovereignties and the authorities among the celestials through the ecclesia. <laughs> That's us. The multifarious wisdom of God is in accord with the purpose of the eons which he makes in Christ Jesus our Lord. In whom we have boldness and access with his confidence through his faith 
Wherefore, I am requesting you not to be despondent at those of my afflictions for your sake, which are your glory. In Romans 8, 35-39, we see what shall be separating us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Affliction or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. According as it is written that on thy account we are being put to death the whole day, we are reckoned as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these we are more than conquering through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither <laughs> death, nor life, nor messengers, nor sovereignties, nor the present, nor what is impending, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, depth nor any other creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yep. <laughs> Nothing. Colossians 2, 8 through 15. Be aware that no one shall be despoiling you through philosophy and empty seduction in accord with human tradition and in accord with the elements of the world and not accord with Christ. For in him the entire complement of the deity is dwelling bodily. <clears throat> and you are complete in him who is the head of every sovereignty and authority in whom you were circumcised also with a circumcision not made by hands in the stripping off of the body of flesh in the circumcision of Christ being entombed together with him in baptism in whom you were roused together also through faith in the operation of God who rouses him from among the dead you also being dead to the offenses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he vivifies us jointly together with him, dealing graciously with all our offenses. Erasing the handwriting of the decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and has taken it away out of the midst, nailing it to the cross. Stripping off the sovereignties and authorities with boldness, <laughs> he makes a show of them, triumph, triumphing over him. Triumphing, yeah. Triumphing over them in it. Yeah. In Second <laughs> Corinthians 4, 4 through 6, in whom the God of this eon blinds the apprehensions of the unbelieving, so that the illumination of the evangel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, does not irradiate them. For we are not heralding ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, yet ourselves your slaves because of Jesus for, for the God for the God who says that out of darkness shall be light shall be shining is he who shines in our hearts is a view to the illumination of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ Colossians 1 11 through 20 this has got to be an Alicia one being endured <laughs> Endued with all power in accord with the mighty might of his glory, or you, I forgot you're one of them too, for mm -hmm. all endurance and patience with joy, at the same time giving thanks to the Father who makes you competent for a part of the allotment of the saints in light, who rescues us out of the jurisdiction of darkness and transports us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, and whom we are having the deliverance, the pardon of sin who is the image of the invisible God, firstborn of every creature. For in him all is created, that in the heavens and that on the earth, the visible, the invisible, whether thrones or lordships or sovereignties or authorities, all is created through him and for him. And he is before all, and all has its cohesion in him. And he is the head of the body, the ecclesia, who is sovereign. Firstborn from among the dead, that in all he may be becoming first. For in him the entire complement relies to dwell. And through him to reconcile all to him, making peace through the blood of his cross. Through him, whether those on the earth or those in the heavens. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. And you, being dead to your offenses and sins, in which you once walked in accord with the eon of this world, it's in accord with the chief of the jurisdiction of the air, the spirit now operating in the sons of stubbornness. Among whom we also all behaved ourselves once 
in the lust of our flesh, doing the will of the flesh and of the comprehension, and were in our nature children of indignation, even as the rest. <laughs> Yet God, being rich in mercy, because of his vast love with which he loves us, we also, being dead to the offenses and the lust, vivifies us together in Christ, and grace are you saved. And rouses us together and seats us together among the celestials in Christ Jesus, that in the up oncoming eons he should be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Ephesians 1, 3-6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blesses us with every spiritual blessing among the celestials in Christ, according as he chooses us in him before the disruption of the world, we to be holy and flawless in his sight. In love, designating us beforehand for the place of the Son for him through Christ Jesus, in accord with the delight of his will, for the lot of his glory, of his grace, which graces us in the Beloved. Yeah, that's references for Ephesians six twelve. Now, may the Lord cause you to increase and superabound in love for one another and for all, even as we also for you, to establish your hearts unblameable in holiness, in front of our God and Father, in the presence of our Lord Jesus, with all his saints. 1 Thessalonians 3, 12-13 We love you all. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. What do you think of that one, Marcia? That was very good. That is very good. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Yep. Putting up with us. <laughs> yeah, she's a good one to put up with. I'll take her any time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Let's go if nobody else will want, want you. Yeah. <laughs> I run my racket. <laughs> Love you guys. I really do. Appreciate you hanging out with us. And, yes, we do. And uh, the emails and the phone calls. We really like them. It's good to fellowship with people. And uh, Paula, I got your email. Yep, I got it. Hang out there. Hang with us. I'm like that too. I <laughs> Yep. You know, there's there's so much going on out there. Uh, so there's a lot of destruction, a lot of lives being lost anymore. It just seems like there's things going on all across the, uh, the world. So It's okay, girl. We're looking for his advent, right? Anytime. Anytime. So anyway, time to go see what God's got for us. Yep. Anything you want to add before we shut this thing down? Nope. Oh, that's good. All right. We'll catch y'all tomorrow. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got? Nothing. Get old. It's just because you said, huh, that's good. <laughs> well, I know how you can get to talking sometimes, won't you? She's you like are these the, little. You are the mouth of the south. Don't tell me <laughs> She's that. like one of these, you, you know, them little cars you wind up and sit down and they. Yeah, you get her wound up. Lordy, lordy. <laughs> yeah, well. All right. Mike is going to go to sleep on his side of the bed tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to y'all later. See you then.